Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So a couple times a month I will generally post uh, a money making method or several. However, one thing I really have failed to ever bring up is how to find your own money making methods because there's generally a thought process that I go through for finding these kind of unique or hidden money making methods. So I think today would be a great day to just go over what that process is and then hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to find money making methods unique to you and you'll be able to take advantage of it without some scummy YouTuber ruining it for you. So anyway, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. So here's how I generally start. There are generally five categories I'm looking in for money making methods. The first one is the most obvious and that is killing monsters for their drops. Uh, the second one is collecting resources. The third one is processing items. And when I say processing items, I mean processing a large quantity of them. Next up is item sets or crafting. Now I would consider crafting to be a type of processing, but when I say item sets and crafting, I'm talking about maybe crafting five blowpipes and selling those for quite a bit of a margin, where I'd consider processing items to be like creating a thousand rings of recoil or something to sell and profit off of. Item sets and crafting are generally quick, easy money making methods that you'll be able to do for maybe a half an hour or 40 minutes so then you have to move on to something else. And the last one is buying from shops or even selling to shops. So those are the five categories I generally look through. From there, I'll start by looking through any of the new updates because new updates almost always have a new way to make money with them, even if there's something small like a quality of life change. So I'll start off at the top. So killing monsters for their drops. Now these don't happen often, generally only with uh, major content releases. So for example, the Kebbles Lowland was the latest major content release and it's pretty obvious how to make money here. You'll go ahead and kill some of the new Slayer monsters. We had the Drakes the alchemical hydra, the worms, and the sulfur lizards. Now this can be a very lucrative way to make money, however, you are going to be competing with a lot of people. This is generally everyone's first idea to make money, kill the new monster, or collect the new resources. So then next up here I'll look at collecting new resources. So are there any new trees, uh, fishing spots, ores to mine? Okay, so a really good example of a new resource item was in the making friends with my arm quest. So when the quest released, there's actually these new salts. Uh, bath salts maybe, I don't know what they're called. And the salts were used to light fires around Gilinor to give you a certain boost, as well as used in the quest I believe, but many people weren't actually collecting them. And upon release, some of these salts were worth a lot. And I remember watching a video of some guy getting about 4 mil an hour on the release date, just mining these salts and selling them back. So collecting resources can be an extremely lucrative way to make money especially with new updates. Next up, I'll look if there's any items you can process. And again, I would consider that to be like a large quantity of items. So you'd be turning like a bunch of uh, logs into uh, unstrung bows or something like that. If there was a new redwood log release, you'd be creating uh, unstrung redwood bows or you'd be stringing redwood bows. I generally don't find too many money making methods with new updates, so that's not my favorite one. Next up is item sets and crafting, which is one of the easiest and my favorite ways to earn some GP. And often a lot of people don't do them because they're not extremely obvious at first. So we have a look at the last update here, updated quest panel and the sandstone grinder and quality of life. It doesn't sound like much, uh, but if we go down here to the Mystic Robe sets, a new item set was put into the game, which is essentially four new items, and you'd be able to combine all of the Mystic Robe items into Mystic Robe sets, uh, which I did do in a video a little while back. Another good example of something I'd consider crafting was uh, Dragon Fruits. You're actually able to squeeze 10 Dragon Fruits into a vial, which can be used on the vents in Mount Karum to become a bottled Dragon's Breath. On the release, I was making these for quite a while and was earning about like 20 or 30k on each potion directly after the update was released. You really just have to look through every new item or new piece of content that's coming into the game with this update. How do you either collect it, craft it, or create it in other ways, and generally just deconstruct the item and work backwards from there. And the last category I'll look through is, are there any new shops? And if there are, are there any profitable items to buy from there? or in some cases, sell to the shop. Now there haven't been any really major new shops added recently, but with every piece of content, especially major new areas, there's always gonna be new shops, and often they will sell profitable resources that you can buy from the shop and sell to the Grand Exchange, or in some cases, the opposite, you can go ahead and buy items from the Grand Exchange and sell them to specialty shops like archery stores, uh, the Bandit Wilderness Shop, or sometimes armor stores, uh, gem stalls, stuff like that. So after I've gone through those five categories on some new content, the last thing I'll look at before moving on to existing content is to look at if this new update has somehow affected an existing piece of content. For example, the Mystic Robe sets. Have the Mystic Robe items uh, gone up in price? If we look at the Sandstone Grinder, has uh, Sandstone gone up in price for some reason? Have Pickaxes gone up in price to mine the Sandstone? Probably not likely, 
but I'll just keep working backwards from there and try to find if there's a opportunity to make some money. All right, so now we're gonna look at existing content. We're looking for monsters we can kill, resources we can collect, items we can process, items we can craft, item sets, or uh, shops we can sell to. Now generally I'll take a quick look through the money making section on the RuneScape wiki. Now I've pretty much done or tried most of these, but sometimes something new will pop up. And really it's just going to be a good resource however you're not going to be finding too many unknown or unique methods on here but it's a really good collection to start off from so how do i find monsters to kill for existing items that may be unknown for one and profitable well that's kind of challenging barring looking through every monster in the bestiary it kind of comes up at random for me for example about a month ago on my farming guild only account i was killing a imp and it dropped a mind talisman now if we look uh, about a month ago or even three months ago, the Mind Talisman was actually worth 4 or 5k each, which is quite a lot, really. So the Mind Talisman, how do you get the Mind Talisman? So from there, I'll go have a look at the Mind Talisman on the wiki. Okay, so let's have a look here. So it's commonly dropped by an Abyssal Leech and the Essence Implane. Well, that's not going to work. But then I'll go have a look at the Abyssal Leech, figure out where it is, and try to kill it. So it has a drop rate of around 1 in 50. So that's probably not going to be amazing. I think it's a little bit higher than the common drop but still an option. A while ago I was looking up an item to flip and I found the Fat Snail and I noticed it was selling for around 3k each. So then I was kind of thinking, okay, what is the Fat Snail and how do you get it? So from there, I'll just do a quick Google search for the Fat Snail and we can see that it is dropped by the Bruised Blamish Snail or the Blood Blamish Snail. So then I'll go have a click on that. We can see that it is dropped 100% of the time and we can see that it actually drops another item, the Blamish Blue Shell. And we'll look that item up and we can see that, uh, well, no one really buys that one. But still, 3k per kill on a monster that is only level 20 is pretty damn good. The RuneScape wiki really is one of the most powerful tools uh, for existing players as well as new players. So now we're moving on to a resource collection. So we'll head over here to G-Tracker and search something like log. And it'll come up with every single log in the game. And then I'll sort by the most expensive logs at the top. So for example, right now, the U Power Logs, Magic Power Logs, those aren't really obtainable that quickly. Magic logs are the most expensive, then we got the split log. Okay, what the hell is a split log? Okay, the split log is made from an arctic pine log when used on a woodcutting stump. So they do sell for 700 each, but uh, such a small volume, I probably wouldn't try it. Uh, next up here, what, we have the Iggy tree log. Actually selling for 1,000 each right now. Obviously not a lot traded, but who knows, you could be able to sell a bunch of logs for 1,000 each, and it might be pretty easy to obtain. So from here, I'll head back to the wiki, look up the Iggy tree log, and we'll just figure out how you obtain it. Can be obtained at level one woodcutting from Aki trees. Okay, we'll click on Aki trees and figure out how you get them. In the Felda Hills, south of Castle Wars. So pretty much just go grab an axe, grab a ring of dueling, and go to town. Now this can be done with other things as well, like for example, ores. However, there aren't as many non-standard ores. All right, so next up here, we'll look through a processing item. Okay, good one to start with is enchanting jewelry. And right on the wiki, there is a actual calculator. So if we go down here, there is a ton of different calculations for uh, if it's profitable to enchant jewelry. For example, here we can see that the opal necklace turned into dodgy necklaces. You can profit about 100 GP on each one. You can create expeditious bracelets for around 166 GP profit. Uh, games necklaces for 241. Gills necklaces for 273. Although once you get into Dragonstone, it becomes kind of expensive and a little bit higher risk to do that. And hey, it even looks like you're going to profit 1 million GP off of creating an amulet of torture. Obviously, you need to check all of these margins yourself. But it's a really good place to start. Another calculator here is the crafting calculator for jewelry. Same deal. Uh, you can see the profit per uh, creation. So for example, making a, a jade ring would profit you around 453 GP. These lesser traded uh, jewelry items though are a little bit uh, inaccurate on the wiki. We can create uh, sapphire rings for 119. Topaz Amulet U for 841. That might actually be kind of interesting. Let's click on that. So we know now the Topaz Amulet U is used to create the Burning Amulet, which actually, if I recall, is kind of more expensive than they have been in the past. So let's have a look at the Burning Amulet here. Uh, worth 4.3k, so that's kind of expensive. So maybe crafting Burning Amulets would be worth it. So we know that's created from a red Topaz. So red Topaz is worth 3.4k and the Burning Amulet's worth around 4.2k. Okay, we'll look at the Topaz Amulet U. Okay, so in that case, we'd probably want to try to buy the Topaz Amulet U's for 3.4k, enchant them and sell back the Burning Amulet for around an 800 GP profit. So that'd be an excellent way to make money as well as train your magic level. Okay, next up here is item sets and crafting. Now, a really easy way to find these items on your own is just to go over to the Grand Exchange and type in set. You will see a ton of different items here that you can use to create 
uh, different sets of them. So from here, I'll just have a look at the set. Uh, let's just look at the Torag's armor set. We then price check the Torag's armor set and all of the individual pieces and see if we're going to make any money combining that together. Another good option here is to look at some high tier PVM items. So for example, Zara drops, uh, Godsword drops, or any high tier PVM item. And from there, we can kind of deconstruct how you make the item. For example, even a god sword. So we just looked up a random item, the Ceredomen god sword. You can create it by adding the Ceredomen hilt to a completed god sword blade. Okay, so we know the hilt is one item, and then we'll have a look at the blade. The god sword blade is a product of fusing a god sword shard 1, 2, and 3 together on an anvil. So we need four items, and we'll craft that into a Ceredomen god sword. And from there, there is oftentimes a margin. You can sometimes get 300k, 400k from doing that assuming you have the proper levels to do so. Okay, and the very last method I generally look for is buying from shops or selling to shops. So a really easy way to do this is to come over to the wiki and look up shop in it, and it'll come up with all the different types of shops, and then I'll just kind of start looking through them. Okay, so first up here we have Grum's Gold Exchange, and you might be saying, well, wow, there's nothing in stock, what a shitty shop. Uh, in some cases that is true, uh, but now we're actually going to look through the price bought at and compare it to the GE price. So for example, if this price is higher, you can buy it off the Grand Exchange for 141, and sell it for 245. Uh, here we can buy this for 711 and sell it for 892. Pretty good. Uh, the Ruby Ring we can buy for 1100 and sell for 1417. Uh, not to mention that this is actually free to play. The Diamond Ring we can buy for 2000 and sell for 2400 at the Gold Exchange, which is pretty damn good. The Ruby Necklace we can buy for 1140 and you get the whole picture. Let's look at another shop here, the shield shop. Same thing, we can buy um, mithril square shields for 712 and sell them for 936. We could buy steel kite shield for 298 and sell them for 510. If, for example, we look at a rune shop, uh, Lundai's area side rune shop, we can see that he sells nature runes for 180 and you can sell them on the grand exchange for 224. Uh, he sells uh, death runes for 180 and they sell for 229 on the grand exchange. There are just honestly a ton of options for ways to make money buying or selling to shops. And is one of my favorite ways to do so. Really just looking through all the different shops here is the best way to do it. You can easily find some extremely weird items that sell for a lot on the Grand Exchange or vice versa. And that's pretty much it guys. I know this was kind of a rambly video so hopefully you didn't mind too much. And hopefully you did end up learning something. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like. I always appreciate it and I will see you next time.